This episode of Hobie is sponsored by Ho Jeff. Save 25% with promo code HobiePod. Please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun. And remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the history of bad ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 498, two away from the great number 500. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. I am Blake Pot. Nope. No Blake Pot. I no am. Brian. Hey, I'm Brian. <laughs> no Jim. I'm Jim. No Scab. I'm Scab. No Doug. So, you see, Disney is a great thing to do. It's, uh, you gotta go there and support it. Yep, we're going old school. That's kind of like a Bar- Barack Obama going to Disney right there. You think that was Barack Obama? That's about my Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying what you gotta do. No, now that's that George is, Bush. Yeah, that's not even George Bush. <laughs> well, the that's second like one. John Madden. <laughs> They're going to say John Mayer. <laughs> what you got to do? <laughs> Your body is a wonderland. <laughs> is that John Mayer? Yeah, the right uh, words, the wrong melody. Okay, well, <laughs> that goes without saying. <laughs> uh, we are going very old school tonight. Um, Doug couldn't make it as a special guy. Scab Jeff couldn't make it. I don't think he likes us. He likes us. Okay. Uh, Brian is out. Jim is suspended. And Blake is on another vacation, which I forgot he was on vacation. So, uh, did you? Did he talk about Alaska the one time? I think he mentioned it. I think he did. Yeah. Um, so, yes. So, this is a very old school episode. If we were like an old 1980s sitcom, this would be a very special episode. And then we would just do clips from the past. Remember that time when we talked about Alaska? Oh, mm. what? I do. Let's think about that. <laughs> Remember that time we did a draft day with nine characters in Serenity and Firefly? <laughs> that was a year ago today. Was it? Well, in my Facebook memory, the oh, thing popped okay. up where you, where I guess I shared your Facebook post saying, vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is a lot. <laughs> and I said, no, vote for me. <laughs> it really, yeah, we drafted nine. <laughs> it is kind of funny. Like, so people that we didn't have video back then, not that we use much video now, but back then <laughs> we would have our original studio was in an unfinished basement and it was a two card table. I think two card tables, right? Yeah, we had two card tables. And basically lots I mean, of different chairs. I think we started with one for like the first episode. But then when we, we added to, you know, when people well, were showing up. Showing up, yeah. Um, and then we had a mattress to uh, ba- uh, baffle the sound. Yes, I don't think it worked. Uh, <laughs> it didn't hurt. I think we had a blanket. I think we had blankets set up one time, and we well, always have the AC running. We remember that in the uh, furnace. It would always, be had, always had to shut the vents. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We had the AC, uh, and then we had Yeti mics, which oh, those things were rough. Uh, yeah, they worked for what they what we needed. At they the time. did. They did. Uh, and then uh, then we got then we moved to the corner. <laughs> Same thing. Uh, we had a wall. Then we had a wall. We we we, we actually moved. Somewhere uh, we into the middle, didn't we? we? Yeah, we we were in the m- middle on the right hand side. Then we moved to the middle of the left hand. That's right. Side, then to the corner. That's right. That's right. Uh, and then we built a room. Yep. Then we built a state uh, a stadium. State of the <laughs> art. <laughs> state of the art podcast studio. By it is state about, of the art. You mean it has walls? It does. It is kind of like six inches short. Like I feel <laughs> like it should be bigger. Just six inches. Just every six direction. Inches directions. Uh, we got lots of outlets in here. We have an outlet up on the ceiling for a camera one day. One day. Uh, and then the green room's finished, so that's really nice. So that's your, uh, after nine years, nine years? 2014, what is it? Yeah, nine yeah. years. Ten, oh. Yeah, it'll be our 10-year anniversary next January. Do you think you would have ever done anything for nine years consistently? <sighs> Well, I've had this job for longer than nine years. Oh, okay. Which I'll give was that. which is the first job I've ever had that was longer than nine years. Yeah, I'm at my job for fifteen. 
It's a long time. It is. Uh, I like it. It's just kind of surprising. Um, uh, let's see here. So, uh, sad news. Just as you were coming over here, Jeff. Let oh, me get no. the story here. Oh, no. Um, do you remember? Do you remember Ryan Mallett, the quarterback? Okay. Yes. Uh, he was. Let me get the story here. Sorry. I should have had this going here. Um, he was a quarterback. Uh, NFL, uh, Arkansas quarter, quarterback. He died tonight or today at the age of 35 from drowning. Ooh. Uh, let's see. Arkansas's Delta Plex News reported on Tuesday that Mallet was transported after the incident from a beach near Destin, Florida to a local hospital where he was pronounced dead. Uh, Mallet was working as the head football coach at Whitehall High School. Uh, let's see here. It's with, quote, it's with great sadness that we share the loss of Coach Ryan Mallet. He was a beloved coach and educator. We ask that you remember his family, team, students, fellow coaches, and the Whitehall School District staff in your prayers. Uh, Mallet played in college as a freshman at Michigan before transferring to Arkansas, where he played two seasons. He was selected in the third round of the 2011 draft by the New England Patriots. Played seven seasons in the NFL with Patriots, Houston, and I remember him with Baltimore. I forgot he was on Houston. Uh, native of Batesville, Arkansas. He was one of the best high school quarterbacks to ever play in his home state. So, um, yeah, I remember I remember uh, uh, Mallet being drafted by the Patriots, and everybody was like, does he have the skill set to do it? And he was he was a decent backup. He was, I mean, he, he was backing up Tom Brady. So. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to do much. It's like when, no. what was it, Doug Peter, Peterson back, backed up Favre? Was that the man, Doug Peterson? You backed up Favre. I don't know. Doug Peterson, I know, was... A starting quarterback, was he with the Eagles for a couple of years? Yeah, because he ended up coaching them. Um, let's see here. Now I got to look at that. Jeez, old Pete. Oh, now you got to see. Well, uh, what's his name? Uh, Doug Peterson, yep. Yeah, he was far back up. Doug Peterson, Matt Flynn, Matt Hasselbeck, and Aaron Brooks. And Aaron Rodgers. And Jordan uh and Aaron Rodgers, yes. Yeah, sorry. Just like Jordan Love was the backup to Rodgers, yes. Yes. So, uh, breath of silence. <sighs> but not for far. Fuck that guy. <laughs> I think I had Ryan Mallon on my fantasy keeper team for a couple of years, thinking he'll back up and then end up getting traded somewhere and he'll be good. And Did it work? It didn't work. No, no. Uh, I had that with Chris Perry <laughs> for the Bengals mm. running back. That did not work out in my favor. Nope. Um, there's a couple guys that, uh, I, I held on, I held on to Odell Beckham for like six years thinking that he's going to do something. <sighs> he never did. He did in the beginning. He did in the beginning. Do you still have him? I think I dropped him last year. Finally, uh, <laughs> after like so many years, I don't know. He's going to be good this year. He, is he with the jets? No. Who's he on? Did he sign with the Ravens? Ah, I'm having the Ravens. Fuck him too. It's another asshole. Um, <laughs> so tell me how you really feel. Uh, let's see here. Also, September 22nd, on a happier note, happier note, uh, September 22nd through the 24th is the Cincinnati Comic Expo. Uh, you can get your tickets at CincinnatiComicExpo.com. Uh, they just had an anime uh, convention. Anime. That Brad uh, did a great job at as moderator. Uh, I was out of town for that, uh, for a baseball tournament, and unfor- so I was unfortunately not able to help Andrew in the convention this year for anime. Um, but... Uh, they do have um, – the anime will be there again next year. I think it was up at the Sharonville Convention Center. Uh, so it was a good time. And then, uh, yeah, at the Comic Expo, though, we had Floyd Norman from Disney Animation Studios. Still a couple left, spots left if you want. If you hear this, check for it because there might not be any spots left. It's costly, but it's worth it. Uh, Ashley Eckstein, the voice uh, actress from The Clone Wars, Rebels, Forces of Destiny, Rise of Skywalker – uh, she's there Saturday and Sunday, just to let everybody know. Uh, Bill Hargraves uh, from Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, American Werewolf in London. He'll be there. Brett Spiner from Star Trek Next Generation and Picard. And Night Court. Oh, the new one? No. What was he in the old one? He was the yokel. Uh, mm. the, the, like, the, the family, the husband and wife yokels who were always in front of Judge Stone's court. Oh, okay. Did not know that. Uh, Christina Ricci uh, from Adam's Family, Mermaids. Oh, wow. Mermaids. Black Snake Moan. 
Oh, yeah? I don't think I've ever seen that whole thing. Is that any good? I don't know. I didn't see the whole thing. Okay. <laughs> That's what Samuel L. Jackson, right? Yes. Okay. Yellow Jacket. Oh. And Sleepy Hollow. Love Sleepy Hollow. Uh, the voice of Mario, Luigi, and Wario, Charles Martinet. It's me. Uh, let's see. Who else is going to be there? Matt Lantern from the uh, Clone Wars. He returns from it. Uh, John DeLacy. Lancey. Q. Uh, yep. Uh, Matthew Lewis from Harry Potter franchise. Paul Freeman from Raiders of the Lost Art. Ark. Art. Ark. Uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Paul Williams. Academy Award nominated from the Muppets. Fancy Island. The good one. Smokey and the Bandit. Uh, and Vincent D'Onofrio are just some of the guys. Jim Lee is also there. Head of DC Comics right now. So and longtime great artist. Yes. And there's uh, many more names coming. Uh, we have been privy to a few, but we cannot announce it yet. Cannot announce it yet. Oh, somebody just texted you, Jeff. Give me the names. Is that what they said? What is that what it is? Yes. Uh, but we cannot. Uh, they will be announcing them in the next couple of weeks and that. But get your tickets to Cincinnati Comic Expo, September 22nd through the 24th. And maybe Ross Marquand's going to be there again. That would be nice. He's not. No. You'll just have to get used to looking at his picture on the wall. His eyes are mesmerizing as they stare at me in this poster. Um, let's see here. Also, uh, Jeff, what was in the Jeff box this week? The Hello Jeff box, I should say. Pez. Just Pez? Pez. What kind? A variety pack. Okay. All kinds are available. Okay. The yucky ones like the chocolate, available. Ooh. You might get it. So it's a mystery box. The sour ones could be there. Okay. Those are the best. Okay. It's a mystery box of Pez. Okay. Just to let you know. And, and a mystery dispenser with it. Ooh. You could get like a Care Bear one. You could. Ooh. An alien one. Alien head pop up. Mm-mm. Is that real? Is that real? Aliens? N- well... Do you think aliens are real? If you're talking about life on another planet, I think there is probably life out there on another planet. Mm-hmm. Have they mastered interstellar space travel yet? I haven't seen any evidence that would make me think so. But Do you think if they did, they wouldn't waste their time just like seeing a couple people at a time? You think they would probably just announce it, right? Or do you think it's like a recon mission? Like... The military. I think, well, I guess it depends on how their society advanced. Mm-hmm. If they advanced like our society, they would definitely do recon first. Um, I feel like they would be more peaceful than our society. You would hope. Well, or if not, we're screwed. <laughs> um, definitely, I think there is uh, aliens somewhere. I don't know if they visit Earth, though. I think the galaxy is too big. The galaxies, the universe. Gal- yes, way too big. Yes. And personally, I think there's people, aliens on Pluto because they're pissed off because they became a non-planet and then they came, became, became a planet again. I think they did not become a planet again. They didn't? Nope. I thought they did. Somebody put a stupid rumor out that they were going to reverse that. <clears throat> Can we start that? No. Oh. I, I'm fine with it being a dwarf planet. There have been many bodies out in our solar system that at one point were called planets that are no longer planets. This isn't unique to Pluto. What about planet X? Is that a planet anymore? No, that is the same as uh, Pluto. A dwarf planet? A dwarf planet. Okay. Okay. In fact, the fact of Planet X, them discovering Planet X is probably the, uh, excuse me real quick. Okay. (coughs) The catalyst for them Mm -hmm. uh, to to demote Pluto, so to speak. I got the history coming up here. Uh, I mean, I think the first three or four asteroids they discovered, they were named planets and then they found hundreds of others in mm-hmm. the same area so they said well i guess they're not planets do you know how many planet or how many moons mars has two that is correct it was on um shoot was that on weakest link i think it was on weakest link oh wow okay so no i'm sorry it was on uh john michael higgins new show split oh, second split second okay i like that show it it's not terrible but they get some bad contestants they get some very bad contestants my daughter loves john michael higgins uh because of him being on community. the other show no not community oh <laughs> best in show no uh <laughs> the other game show 
um uh, america says yes yes uh so but she likes hey yahoo and that is a horrible show oh sounds terrible it is but great host tom cavanaugh ah yes so great guy very nice guy but horrible show um but unless he's coming to the expo that's a wonderful game show <laughs> love it tom keep up the good work no you can i would be honest with him it's, it's not the best but uh sometimes you mentioned america says i had always discussed with my dad who is this like some guy named joe america because some of these things are not something that would win in the top seven answers in a a poll if you polled most americans it's got like family feud uh, it's a poll of the top seven answers. Most of the time, I think it's seven, right? It's always seven. Yes. It's always seven. And they ask a question, and they supposedly polled America. First thing is, who's who's doing these answers? Because every time I get a question like that, uh, I get a phone call, I hang up on it. Like, I'm not <laughs> answering those questions. If you have said, hey, I'm from America Says, then maybe I will. But no one's doing that. I so, don't think they get your via phone anymore. Do you think it's email? <laughs> I think they find you walking past their door and say, hey, you want to answer a few questions? <laughs> what are you? America says it's on the door. They go to the mall and set up a little booth. I'm out. I'm out. Who goes to the mall besides impractical jokers? Apparently the terrible people who answer these America <laughs> says polls. What is your favorite type of dog? Uh, Shinzu Bizu. That's not even a real dog. How is that up there? <laughs> Shinzu Bizu. It's <laughs> not even a real dog. I'm sorry. That's on there. That's all right with the S. <laughs> Uh, Labradoodle? Nope, that's not it. It's a Labracucal. What? <laughs> that's not even a word. Bastards. Uh, but no, Split Second's fun. I enjoy that one. And I, it always annoys me, though. He's holding the iPad to answer the questions. It's like, that, looks, that doesn't look comfortable how the, he's holding it. It's like upside down. I think it's comfortable for him. Correct. Otherwise, he wouldn't hold it that way. Well, yes, I understand that. <laughs> um, I will say we've been watching... Hundred thousand dollar pyramid, yeah, with Michael, with Michael Strahan. It's not horrible. No, but honestly, I don't think it's as good as the old pyramid when it was Dick Clark. I agree with you on that. Might be better than the Donny Osmond hosted pyramid. Ugh. I will say, John Lovitz is a horrible contestant. Oh, he is. We've seen three episodes with him in it. That's too many, and he is horrible. Something you do with a basketball, you know, dribble, dribble. When it dribbles, what does it do? It starts with B. Dribbles, dribbles. <laughs> Bounce. Ah. Uh, Bubble. Uh, pass. <laughs> you just took 20 seconds to say pass, John. Yeah. <laughs> it's no. bounce. No, when you watch those game shows that have celebrity contest, well, not mm-hmm. contestants, but celebrity. So you have to watch, and it's like, there's certain celebrities that you want. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was that one that... Uh, uh, Craig Ferguson hosted. Oh shoot! But uh, now you're going. To... Yeah, but um, he would have you know a lot of return celebrities, and it's like uh, uh, Ross Matthews. You want him to be on your oh, team from Leno? Yeah. Okay. Ross the intern. Yep. You want him to be on your team. He is great at these. Uh, you need me on that team. Exactly. <laughs> um. Oh, and I can't remember her name. Oh. Uh, there's always she, there was one woman from Community that always did good too, from, not on Craig Ferguson show, just in general. Yeah, I can't um, remember who it was. Uh oh, crud! Her name's uh, Yvette Nicole Brown. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the lady. I think she was in Reba uh, with Reba McIntyre. <laughs> this is you know that one person from Reba Reba McIntyre. No, it wasn't Reba. McIntyre. Oh, okay. Uh, but she was like one of the better uh, celebrity uh, game shows. She did the circuit for game shows. Uh, Craig Ferguson was really good on The Hustler. I like that show. I never saw that one. That was a really good show. That was two seasons. We were, where were we? We were somewhere at a hotel a couple week months ago, maybe a month or two ago, and they had on. It was out of state, and they had on Win Lose or Draw with Jerry O'Connell. Have you ever seen that? It, I don't it, think I saw it with Jerry O'Connell. Yeah, it's a new syndicated one. It's been on for a couple of years, but it's not here at Cincinnati. Oh. And where we were, I can't remember, but they had it on, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to watch this because I've heard this is on. Yeah. 
oh man, he is a bad host. He is a horrible host. <laughs> and then I forget who they had on, and the two so those two celebrities. Uh, no, I'm sorry, four celebrities, two on each team, and then one regular contestant. Uh, and let me tell you, whoever they had on that episode, I can't remember who it was. It was like lesser known TV stars. No, of course, it was horrible. They just did a horrible job with it. But yeah, Jerry O'Connell, not so much. No. And then he was always like, oh, well, it's this one. It's like, fuck you. You didn't know it unless it was in front of you, <laughs> asshole. Melissa Peterman. That was the name of the lady. From Reba? From Reba. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's a great gig if you can get it. Ross Matthews and Melissa Peterson. If you can get them on your team as your celebrity, you... It's kind of like a... I think she showed up in a lot of 25 words or less, too. Have you seen that? Show? Yeah, with Meredith Vieira. Yeah. That's not bad. It's not bad. I think they changed it at COVID. Like, so I think they're... Uh, via internet now or something, mm-hmm. so the contestants are like not there anymore. They're like at home on the computer. Really? I think last time I saw it, it was. Wow. I, I saw the I, one with um, John, the family, the Family Feud host, the old Family Feud host. Uh, he was Peterman on Seinfeld. Oh, uh, <laughs> just Peterman. It's just yeah, Peterman. J. Peterman. Yeah, J. Peterman. He was good on it. My sister's now going to correct me. I can't believe you forgot his name. <laughs> it's John Peterman, right? <laughs> Jay Peterman. Whatever. Uh, Bosco. Um, yeah. So there you go. Uh, there's your game show wrap up for this week. Oh, uh, and by the way, mm-hmm. the name of the moons of Mars are Phobos and Deimos. Those guys sound like super villains. Or the name of uh, minor uh, Greek gods, super villains, or would they be Roman gods? Wait, let me think. I guess Roman gods It'd be Roman. I'll go Roman. I, I think they're the sons of Mars. They could be like super villains, like the Wonder Twins. Like, oh, what is it? Phoebus and Demos, Phobos. <laughs> That's close. And Demos, Demos, Phobos and Demos. Oh no! Uh, for, what could they turn into? If Zane <laughs> or Z- Zane, <laughs> what's the Wonder Twins? Where are their names? Uh, Zan and Jaina. Yeah, if they can do water or water product and an animal, what would be Phobos and Damon? <laughs> <laughs> what would be their turn? They could turn into solids and weapons. That's what I'm going with. They're villains. Um, do you watch anything this week? I didn't do much watching of anything this week. Oh, wait. They are actually the Greek names of the gods. Oh, look at that. Even though the planets are the Roman names. Should we put something about Roman gods in our title this week so we can say we actually talked about it? Oh, we could. Yes. Yes. No, this I didn't watch a whole lot because this weekend I was at the Origins Gaming Fair. How was that? In Columbus? In Columbus, Ohio. How was that? It was fun. Great. I got to hang out with some friends I haven't seen in a while who all met up there. Any new games? Uh, I did not purchase any. Played a couple. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, tested some. One that I thought, oh, that might be fun to you know play with you guys on game night. Mm-hmm. And so when I went Sunday to the convention floor, the people were gone. Which was the game? Uh, it was Black Hole Rainbows. Oh, okay. It's also the name of a port. Never mind. No, no, it is not. Oh, sorry. What's it about? Uh, you have to get uh, the little gems, all the colors of the rainbow, mm-hmm. you know, the one of each color onto your into the, into your black hole. So it's kind of set collecting. Okay, uh, you got to get the different colors, and then there's cards that you know you can play to steal some or move some mm-hmm. or stuff like that. So it was, and then you know once you get yours filled up, then. You put them back in the middle and try to go keep going until you reach the number of coins or whatever. That's to, to win. win. Okay. Um, did you see any new Ticket to Ride games? I did not. Okay. I couldn't I, tell you what the last one was. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, I don't think I saw any any new of those come out. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think. I think last year there might have been like a new like. Well, I'm trying to think. I know a couple of years ago there was uh, the New York taxi cab version. Yeah, I saw that one. I haven't played it, yeah. but it does not look appealing. And then I saw, I think they tried to do it completely. I was, was it 
based off a of ticket to ride, but it was airplane thing. Or I can't remember exactly. There's what it was. rails and sails. I got yeah, that one. No, it wasn't that. I've enjoyed that one. It's not great, but it's still fun. But uh, those are ones I saw in past years recently. Well, one last year it was shut down for two years. Like, is this the first year back? They were back last year. I think was their first year back. Okay. Do you remember when we went to Origins? I need to start going back to these things. I do remember. Um, we played a game, and that was when I was a newbie to tabletop. I was a little overwhelmed. Yes. But there was a game where you did airships, like balloon airships. Do you yes. remember that one? I do remember it. And I can't remember what that game is called. And I thought we had fun with it. We did. We had a little race. Yes. It was an airship race. I remember you looked it up when we got back. Yes. I will look for that. Um, okay. But you didn't buy anything. That's kind of rare. I didn't buy anything. Okay. Well, part of it is I've got too much stuff that I still have yet to play. Yes. And some monies to not spend. (laughs) That's always a good thing. Ticket to Ride Legacy is the new one. Okay. That might have been the one maybe we tried. Everything's going to Ticket. Everything's going to like Legacies. uh, Ticket to Ride Legacy, Legends of the West. That's what it is. No, that is not the one I tried. I have not. It, if, I, if, if it was there, I did not see it this year. Yeah, I forgot. I did see that one out. Okay. I, I like legacy games, but sometimes I just want to play games. Like, oh, I understand. Those are available too. Any other recommendations you saw? Uh, oh, let me see, check. Uh, my one buddy bought this one that uh, we had. And I, uh, I took a picture of it so I'd remember it. But I got to pull that up on my phone if you give um, me one second. That's fine. While you're doing that, I we played second um, a full game of last Friday that I got for Father's Day. It's not about the Ice-T one. Um, the which one? Ice Cube one. <laughs> last Friday. I think I told oh, you about it. It's yeah. like a Friday the 13th one. Oh, okay. And one person's the murderer. Murder. And you have your own murder murder board. And you're, like, writing it down on a piece of paper so they can't tell you what, what space... Because there's, like, 200-something spaces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hidden uh, movement. It's like hide-and-seek. Yeah. And, like, the, there's four chapters. The first chapter, you're killing the campers. Second chapter, they're chasing you because it's daytime. Third, you're killing them. Fourth, they come back and try to kill you for good. Um, and that's... It was all... We played it with my oldest son and my wife last night. And... Because I was off yesterday. I was like, you guys want to play that tonight? And so... My son was like, yeah, I guess. It's like, yeah, I know. You can't play Call of Duty. Just come on, let's play. And uh, they there's five campers, and so they're divided between the two of them to play. Okay. Uh, so you can play up to six people. One's a murderer, the rest of them is that. We played the whole way through. First time it was just my son, and I played two or three chapters. But the best part about it is it's a fun game. I really enjoyed it. But you can only you could play one chapter at a time. Like you don't have to. Oh, yeah. You can just do it like one chapter. You could just do it as okay. I want the uh, campers to get there, uh, and you want to kill them. Like that's the first cha- chapter. First chapter is um, campers have to find the keys to get into cabins, and once somebody's in there, they're safe. Uh, each camper has a little has a little card with a story on it. They each have special powers. Uh, you can pick up clues and all that stuff. So. Very, I enjoyed it a lot. Are the five it. campers like uh, the Scooby Doo gang? They're kind of like the typical gang, the campers you see in horror movies. Uh, the one guy, the one girl came there just to get away from her ex boyfriend. Another guy, Sam, the IT guy, he just wants to show people that, you know, he's more than that. He was the one that uh, won the game for them last night. The so, IT guy. Nice. He became the predestined. So, uh, but yeah, uh, last Friday, they have an expansion pack. I'm not sure if I like the expansion from it, just from looking at it. I may get it, but it's not. I'm going to play this game, and I, I want to play with you guys, too, because I think you... I know you don't like scary movies, but I think I you might... Mind, in, I think I you'll like... I don't mind playing the games. I think it's a, it's a lot like Pandemic. Uh, like, you got to all work together. And my wife said, if we played this with Jeff and Jim, I think they would just direct me where to go. <laughs> She's like, there would be a lot of strong-willed people trying to say, no, you should do this. Uh, I try not to do that. No, I know. <laughs> and she's not mad. It's just the way way things are. Uh, and a side note, we are getting together on a Sunday. Jim, you and me, and we're playing Dead Reckoning, the $150 pirate game. I'm now free on Sundays. Okay. So well, I'm actually free on Saturdays, too. I saw Dead Reckoning was up for one of the Origin Awards. 
we had fun with it. Yeah, whether it won or not, I don't know. I didn't see what won, but I saw where they had all their nominees display, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I played that game. I don't think you're going to have to worry about reading it for six hours this time. I think you a quick run through will be fine. Maybe, maybe. But anyway, the game uh, we uh, tried out and my uh, buddy bought was a uh, Hollow Type. Okay, it is a dinosaur themed. Okay, I like that already. Uh, it is from the uh, perspective of. Uh, paleontologists, uh, you know, professors who are writing papers about dinosaurs. So you got okay. You got to. So collect, you're Ross, <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Okay. You got to collect research and bones and fossils, and you know, it's a worker placement where you get little workers to move and go to the different areas to get the mm-hmm. things, and then you have to go to publish your paper. And then, you know, as you publish more papers, you get more stuff available to you. And, okay. And as everyone is publishing papers, the game's moving along. And it's when you, however long, of, there's a couple different lengths depending on how mm-hmm. long you want to play. And I forgot where I was going with that. But anyway. Uh, do they ever yeah. come alive, the dinosaurs? Dinosaurs do not come alive. That seems like fun, though. But like different dinosaurs are worth different points when you write a paper on them. Mm-hmm. And, and then you can collect different uh, bonuses based off of, uh, you know, what types of papers. If you're the first person to mm-hmm. get to this one place, you'll maybe get extra bonus points. And everyone's got secret agendas to you, publish certain different types. And Do you feel like the creators were like, how do we make the Ross character and friends exciting? No. no. Okay. You don't think it's that? No. Well. Do you get leather pants? Um, God. It has, it has nothing to do with friends. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, I was say, I'm assuming the people there were uh, the, the publishers and probably the uh, creators of the game, and they were nothing like Ross. Okay. I'll say that. But think, uh, think, uh, it was a perfect game for my buddy who's a college professor who mm-hmm. writes and publishes some papers and whatnot, and apparently he said his parents met on a... Uh, a dig, an archaeological dig. So it's like, this is right up his alley. It's a fun little meetup, yeah. how your parents got together. Yeah. Um, I think my parents met ass sock hop. <laughs> um, I've, I'm going to have to do Origins next year with you. I think do I might it. have to. Do it. We were in um, Elizabethtown, Kentucky, down in Brian, uh, intern Brian's neck of the woods. I enjoyed that movie. Uh, Elizabethtown? Yeah. I don't think it's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> what, Orlando Bloom wasn't there? No, he was not. Oh. Well, he could have been. Uh, my 13U had a uh, baseball tournament down there, and they were not a very good team this year, and we knew they were going to get killed. But these fields, you walk into, like, the Elizabethtown is world, a country, uh, known nationwide for some of the best baseball fields, all turf, except for the outfields grass. Oh my gosh, it was beautiful. Dugouts were amazing. You walk in, it looks like Camden Yards when you walk through the entrance of the uh, park. Um, it was beautiful. So I was very happy that he got to play in these fields um, for working hard all year in that. So he really enjoyed it. He played great, and then it was nice to see, like, you know. But then the problem is, like, the first team they played was from Illinois. If you're traveling eight hours, you're not coming with a scap team. You're a bad team. No. And I think the one team, they were from Bloomington, Illinois. I think the uh, smallest guy was bigger than me. Uh, <laughs> wow. And this is 13U. Very nice team. Very nice team. Um, they were in it until the second inning when the guy hit it off the wall. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in it until the second inning. <laughs> and it was like, oh, this is not pretty. <laughs> um, I mean, it was just. And then they played a second team from somewhere deep in Indiana. And, uh, yeah. Deep in Indiana. Is that from Gary Chandler? No, it was oh. it, it, to the uh, uh, deep in the heart of Texas. Don't know that. You don't know deep I in the heart do of Texas. If, <laughs> I probably do if you've played it. Did, have you watched Pee Wee's Big Adventure? Not for a very long time. Oh, okay. No, it's just an old song uh, that I guess is big for Texans or whatnot. But not Indiana. No, I was just taking the song, oh. making the song in Indiana. I feel like I like Indiana better than Texas. 
But, uh, well, the, the Pee Wee, you know, when he was like on the phone, he's trying to go to the Alamo because that's where the fortune teller told him mm-hmm. his bike was. So he calls his friend. He's like, guess where I am? No, really? I'll prove it. And he sticks his head out of the phone booth. They were a thing back then. <laughs> and yelled, the stars at night are big and bright. And everybody around him stopped and went, deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> I feel like that would be good Texas. You know, yeah. that, that could be a patriotic film. <gasps> oh, that's a tease. <laughs> that's a tease. <laughs> uh, but I will say, like this ball field was beautiful. Every there was twelve fields, all had turf. Uh, it literally did look like Camden Yards. Like every field was beautiful. It was unbelievable. Every field had a DJ, so every kid had walk up music, and they announced their names. And they had a working scoreboard that was actually balls and strikes, and like actually somebody paying attention the whole time. So, um, it was a beautiful field. So, I was very happy to see that. Hey, speaking of Camden Yards, the Reds are up 2-1 to one in Baltimore. After losing 10-3 last night. Yeah, well, that rain was terrible. Yes. Um, but, yeah. So, it was a two-and-a-half-hour drive to Elizabethtown. First day we went, we went on Friday, and it took us like three hours and 45 minutes because of fucking traffic. Uh, we'll do it. And Sunday we came back because it got rained out because it, it poured Sunday morning oh, down there. Okay. So we left at 11.30. I think we got back at like 2.45, 3 o'clock. It was horrible both ways. I don't know why. Because at the beginning, it was like, oh, two and a half hours. This is great. Told our younger kids, one movie. Just turn on DVD. You're fine. Uh, Did no, not happen. Two movies. Two movies. Two movies. So At least we live in an age now where we have the technology to show movies in cars. Yeah. At one point, my wife was like, kids return some music on i can't handle another movie in the back <laughs> like we just can't well headphones exist jason headphones i know i know give the kids headphones um ticket to ride going back to that legacy legends of the west yes. pre-order eta november 23rd 95 dollars and 96 cents on portlandia port board landia outlet uh let's see here Legends of the West finally gives you the chance to step into the story of your favorite train game and explore the imagination of blah, blah, blah. You are going to embark on a journey across 12 games, managing your own North American railway company to wealth and fortune and a campaign full of adventures. You still complete your tickets, but you need to develop other skills if you hope to overcome the unexpected events. Uh, game after game, route after route, you will continuously fill your vault with earnings. You open up Frontier Pot, Boxes that will unlock new roles, content, and many more supplies. See, now I'm interested. Damn it. <laughs> I wasn't. I, I don't like you it. until you started reading it. I know. I'm a sucker for tra- Ticket to Rides. I love Ticket to Ride games. Games can last anywhere from 20 to 90 minutes of the thir- 12 games that they have. So, I don't know, are you, you like Ticket to Ride? Yeah, I love Ticket to Ride. Okay. I thought you did. Uh, before we get into feedback here, let's do uh, some listener, uh, do some Twitter poll of the week here this week. Listener Twitter poll of the week? Yeah, that's what we're going with. Uh, let's see here. Question this week. You can find us at Bad Ideas Podcast. In honor of 4th of July, what is your favorite film to open over this holiday, the 4th of July? Because it used to be a big holiday to open. It used to. Uh, are- uh, Indiana Jones is opening yeah. this week, June 30th, but that's not 4th of July. Yeah, well, it is. Well, if you're counting, 4th of July is going to be on a Tuesday, so it's opening the Friday before the 4th of July. Which is June 30th. But I'm sure there are probably some things that are going to be opening on the 4th, too. Uh, if only we had least, a section of that. Yeah, they, they used to do that when I worked there every 4th. No matter what day of the week it was, something new was opening that day. Um, Let's see here. I will find that out. Um, so we had Independence Day, Transformers. I think I stepped on this. Transformer, Spider Man: Colon Far From Home. Was that Mysterio? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And Men in Black. Here comes Men in Black. To be honest, none of these are really great films. No, uh, you missed the best one. Which one's that? Wild Wild West. <laughs> <laughs> and a fucking spider. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it used to be Will Smith's movies opened on 4th mm-hmm. of July. Uh, he had Men in Black, Independence Day, Men in Black 2. And Wild Wild West. Wild. 
<laughs> keep thinking of Cartman. <laughs> wow, wow, West. <laughs> James <and> Artemis. West. <laughs> Clyde Frog. That's right. Our saving Salma. Hi, in the wild, wild West. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just trying to see what's coming out. Um, in last place, Tide. That's kind of surprising. Transformers and Spider Man Far From Home with 11%. Wow. Uh, and then winning 63% to 15%. Independence Day above Men uh-huh. in Black. <laughs> to be fair, I would pick Independence Day above Men in Black. I wouldn't. Uh, let's see here. I mean, Vincent D'Onofrio is in Men in Black. Brian Ow had have to go Independence Day just for the speech. And Ryan L. Terry. Uh, we like you, man. Uh, he picked Jaws. Okay. Because Jaws opened over 4th of July weekend. Did it? I did not realize that. So there you go. See, we are. We know Learned everything. something new every day. Uh, so, Jeff, do you want to start with some listener feedback? Yes. Okay. Well, I look wow. up 4th of July movies this week. You do that, and I will go to listener feedback. Oh, wait. Here we go. That means it's the bomb listener feedback brought to you by today by Google. Look it up. <laughs> ah, I see what you did there. Yeah. And uh, let's see. We, we'll start with uh, this guy named mm, number one fan. Doug. Can't give yourself a nickname. Doug. Uh, Sunny D. Doug. Uh, can't make it tonight. Doug. Postman always delivers twice. Doug. Maybe thrice. <laughs> Doug. Kevin Costner. Doug. Dad. <laughs> anyway, we'll start with him. Yes. He asks, if Brian was in charge of Hobie, what changes would he make? Uh, he actually sent in a voicemail for this answer. Let me play it here. He did it on the answer machine of Hobie. <laughs> Yeah, this is Brian. Uh, if I was going to be in charge, thanks, Doug, for the answer. I would love to be in charge. Uh, first off, Jason would be intern, because, yeah, he's back to intern. Yeah, I'll take that. Uh, and then I would have dogs. Dogs everywhere in the studio. Doesn't matter where they crap. Just dogs everywhere. Love dogs. Do you know I love dogs? I love dogs. I love Marley and Me. <laughs> One of my favorite books. Movie was okay. I love Owen Wilson. Mm-hmm. I think that was uh, that was an Owen Wilson. <laughs> I love Marley, that Marley dog. Then they got the puppy. Oh, the puppy at the end was too hard, too hard, just heartbreaking. Oh my goodness, because Marley died. Not that old yeller stuff though. Goodbye. Ow. What was he calling on a walkie-talkie? <laughs> Over. <laughs> Thanks, Brian, for that. That was wonderful. Ah, uh, so that that's what Brian would do. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for sending that in, Brian. <laughs> um, From Meow God. Oh, meow. At Meow God. Yes, Meow God. What's the best tabletop game to play to introduce someone new to tabletops? <laughs> I think we just answered that for 40 minutes. Well, Ticket to Ride is definitely one of the yes. easiest ones to get people new into the game. I played uh, Catan a couple weeks ago. I would not recommend that as one to get people in. Uh, the people playing it, our friends, yeah. that was their first time really playing tabletop games. Yeah. They bought it, and they played it a couple times, and they said they really enjoyed it and would like to see other tabletop That's, games. I mean, I guess it's good that way, because... You start playing other games after Catan and realize how much better they are than Catan. I'm not a huge Catan fan. Um, it might be because I'm tainted because you've said that before, and I, I've always yeah, I could be but, skewing your opinion, but it wasn't the best game. Like I enjoyed it, but it wasn't anything. I mean, other stellar. games like to learn different types of mechanics that are are cool. Um, to Carcassonne is a good one for tile laying purposes. You learn, and 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 that's the place where they first. Uh, had the little meeples Mm -hmm. and coined the term meeple okay um for sushi go is good for uh uh, uh, drafting card drafting sushi go is a fun one my kids really like that one um 
those those are off the top of my head. I'm trying to think. I thought there was something else. Uh, something like Stone Age, if it's available. I think it went out of print. I don't know if it's back in print. Is good for uh, 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 when you take the little guys and you put them. Uh, work replacement? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it is a great uh, introductory to work replacement. Um, if you're looking for kids to get involved, Blue Orange has really good games for kids. They're not so much uh, tabletop, like the traditional tabletop, but they're good games, much better than like Shoots and Ladders games. Oh, yeah. Um, there's also... I'm better trying to... than the game of life. Yes. Um, Actually, one of the games I think uh, you have, and I know I've played over at Scab Jeff's, uh, uh, was it Planet? Was that Planet's a really fun game. I think, I think Planet is pretty good. Uh, Savannah Park. We got that for Christmas. That's a good one for kids. I have kids that are 7, um, 9, and 13. So it, we're try- we have a wide range. And we really don't take it easy. Like the 7-year-old learns to play games, you know, just like everyone else. Um, and we help. But he really likes – He we've never played Ticket to Ride kids version with him. He's always played regular Ticket to Ride and all that stuff. Um Kids can pick up on those games a lot quicker than you think. Um, he uh, Smash Up is a good one, too. Oh, I love it, Smash Up. I think if you do the I, basic. I, I, yeah, if you do the basic, I think I would probably do something else before Smash Up. Correct. I agree. Uh, Three Little Pigs uh, by Noble Knight Games. Uh, the Noble Knight Games has some really good games uh, for kids. Uh, and... Um, just for adults too. Those are a little bit more, um, what do you call it? Uh, kid for the more tabletop type. Um, you have, of course, it looks like a lot of them are out of, <laughs> out of, uh, print now. Um, <laughs> there we go. Nope. Wrong one. Uh, because they also had the tortoise and the hare one. You've played that before with my kids. I think I like tortoise and the hare. Uh, um, we had three little pigs that was on there. Uh, I'm trying to think what other ones we've had. Uh, but yeah, Noble Knight Games is a good one. Knight is K-N-I-N-G-T. Gotcha. So there you go. Good job, Meow. Uh, moving on. Uh, from Stork. How many Hobie podcasters does it take to screw in a light bulb? Three? I think you only need a minimum of two. Yeah. Hold the ladder. The, well, the light bulb just has to be big enough. What else we got? (laughs) Oh, wait. (laughs) The week no one's here, you're finally getting the the, the, the music right, the the sound effects. I pay attention more. Uh, (laughs) And that's finally getting it right. I mean, that was like a minute after the joke. So (laughs) Uh, we've got a question from BlakeBot at BlakeBot19. Ooh. Says, which record will be broken first? Johnny Vandermeer back to back no hitters. Okay. Or Randy Johnson hitting one bird with a pitch. Exploding. Um I guess it wasn't a pitch, but uh I think someone tied the record this year with a batted ball. That killed a bird? Killed a bird. Did it shatter and explode. Will Brennan, MLB outfielder, accidentally hits and kills bird. Well, I guess that's your answer right there. With a hard ground ball. You would think somebody's got to do back-to-back no-hitters again, right? It's tough to do, but... Obviously. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> since only one person's did it in the hundred... And you also and, worry that pe- managers would not let the guys go that far with pitch counts well, anymore. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, no one's going to get complete games these days, no. let alone no-hitters. I mean, we had... Uh, I wonder how many... Just, uh, Hunter Green earlier this season was working on a no hitter, and they took him out in the seventh. Yeah, I, I, he didn't finish seven. Yeah, I, I, I don't even know if he started the seventh. Um, but then again, he also like <laughs> had like a hundred pitches after six innings. Uh, the uh, did you see? Speaking of baseball, LSU won last night the College World Series. Great World Series. Uh, watch it from beginning to end. Florida won Game Two. 25 to 5 or something like that 24 yeah 25 to 5 last night LSU came back in game 3 the final decisive and won 18 to 4 oh that was close um it was funny they were up 18 to 4 going to the bottom of the ninth and the announcers were like 
And going into the bottom ninth, LSU's up 18-4. They lost by 20 yesterday. <laughs> uh, just going to show you that they were ticked off. My wife's comment was, maybe they shouldn't have run up the score yesterday. I think it ticked them off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but congrats to LSU. It was a great World Series. All right. Actually, I got to update this. Okay. When uh, Will Brennan mm-hmm. hit, hit the, the ball that killed the bird, it came like a week after Zach Gian mm-hmm. accidentally killed a ball with a throw. Killed a ball? Or killed a bird with, with a, a throw. throw. Well, now I got to read about the Zach, Zach Gallon. I'm sorry. Sure, that wasn't the star of Gremlins? Oh, that was Zach Gillian. Sorry, uh, wrong person. Damn it. Yeah. Okay. Here. Yeah. MLB pitcher accidentally kill hits and kills bird with throw in pregame warm up. There you go, Blake Bot. So it was a warm up. It wasn't an actual pitch in a game. Yeah, but Randy Johnson was a spring a spring, training spring training game. That doesn't right. really count. So, yep. That thing exploded too. Wow. That, and he's on the Diamondbacks. So they were both Diamondbacks when they threw balls at birds. Randy Jackson. Randy Jackson. Randy Jackson. <laughs> yes. Hey, dog. You're too pitchy. I'm going to kill you with the ball. Too pitchy, dog. Uh, what else we got here, Jeff? Uh, I guess we will end it with Dr. Number One asking, why didn't the 365 Flicks podcast cover the coronation for you? Didn't we answer this question? I think we did. I think we did. So go back to that episode and uh, yeah. that, there's your answer. Yeah. Well, the answer is they did. We just didn't care enough to actually pay attention. So, this is a lot of table talk talk here. Um, Star Wars Shatterpoint, Shatterpoint is a game from Noble Knight Games. And I'm looking at this one, and I think I want it because the Star Wars figures are really cool. I don't want to play it, though. Um, it's all figures. They have lots of miniature figures. Okay. So, and I'm not a big figures game, but these are really cool. They have like a general Obi Wan can. Oh, it's during the Clone Wars. Uh, maybe not then. Never mind. I mean, it's pretty cool though what they have. I like it. They have the clone troopers with them. Cody from the clone troopers. I like it. Is everything all right over there? Yeah, everything's fine. Oh, okay. I'm just making sure. I'm trying to queue up for the next uh, segment. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're calling me out for they it. They have a plans and preparation pack. Four little figures, Jeff, for $45. That's a lot of money. Oh, it's a lot of money. Uh, that's the biggest spending on games is figures. Games with, uh, the, the, yeah, those type of figures will, will run you a lot of money. I mean, it's pretty cool. I don't know what Shatterpoint is about, but I, I just don't have the patience for the figures, though. That's the thing. I just don't. Of course, now there's a G.I. Joe game now, too. Jeez, old Pete. That's the thing is, like, they got the figures, and they get real detailed. And, you know, I mean, I know people love painting them, and that's cool. But people who don't love painting them, they either have to, for them to get that type of enjoyment out of you, then have to buy them painted, which is more expensive. Or you just have a gray piece of plastic. And at that point, I would rather just have a small wooden cube. Yeah. I mean... There's a G.I. Joe, because I love G.I. Joe, the cartoon series. Um, G.I. Joe cr- Mission Critical Cooperative. Ah, it's Miniature Board. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. So we were discussing at work today mm-hmm. Community. The show? The show Community. Damn it. You'll, 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 Stay you'll on target. appreciate this. Okay. But uh, uh, my friend at work was saying he was reading a list where they ranked all the episodes of Community mm-hmm. Best to Worst. And he's like, he had like something in like his bottom three that I would say was like one of the best they ever did, which was the G.I. Jeff episode. Did they dress as G.I. Joes? You told me you watched this episode. Did you lie to me? Did I see this one? It's the one where like half of it was in animation. G.I. Oh, I did see parts of that. Yeah. That was on YouTube. I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, that's one of the best episodes. And I guess the guy who wrote this list was like, I, that's right. Uh, I guess it might be that, good, but yep, that's, yep it. that's it. I have seen parts of this. This is a yeah. long time ago. Yeah. Jeezel. But it's like, yeah, I, I guess it might be okay, but I didn't get the reference material. Yep. And I'm like, how the hell do you not know G.I. Joe? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I do remember this. 
Yeah. Man, that's been a long time since of that. Oh, yeah, she was dressed as barbecue. That's right. <laughs> Don't jump over those wires, kids. <laughs> Thanks, barbecue. <laughs> I don't want to electrocute myself. Pork chop sandwiches. Uh, you got some news of the geek over there for me, Jeff? It's time for another episode of the news of the geek. Uh, we're going to switch things up here on news of the geek. I'm trying to find the article here. Um, maybe I'm not. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Um. So first off, we'll do this. We'll do this one here. All right. Here we go. Here we go. You do this. Harumph. Harumph. Over the past co- uh, per comic book movie dot com. We'll do number two. Dot com. Over the past couple of weeks, we've heard that production on the Mandalorian season four has been delayed as a result of the ongoing WGA strike. Initial reports suggest that its start date was pushed back to September, although there's chatter about cameras not rolling until November. Scripts for this next batch of episodes were completed prior to the strike. Sure they were. And sets were being built, including Boba Fett's fire spray gunship. Uh, that's led to speculation about the work beginning on the book of Boba Fett season two. But I like this one. Bespin Bulletin believes otherwise, as, re- as first reported on San Francisco Gazette. Reds and Orioles have been delayed because of rain. Again, thank you. It's explained. <laughs> I'm really sorry about what I said, and there's a long home run to this. <laughs> it's explained that The Mandalorian Season 4 is the only Star Wars series in active development, aside from those we already know about. As of right now, there are no plans for more episodes of The Book of Boba Fett. In fact, the show doesn't appear to be in any stage of active production, with Timuro Morrison's Boba Fett set to return to being a supporting character in Ding Drawn and Ding Grogu's Disney Plus series. I'll be honest, we really don't need Boba Fett anymore. I'm okay with it. Like I we, think they did a disservice to Boba Fett. It, yeah. Especially when like the actor playing him is like you you're having him speak way too much. When yeah. the actor is telling you that I have too many lines, maybe maybe listen. I just I just really don't care. And like Boba Fett was fine. Like the Rancor was fun, like when he's terrorizing the city. But like it was well. Three episodes weren't even a Boba Fett show. Uh, it was a Mandalorian <laughs> show, and I don't know. Like, I'm just not. I'm okay with it. Not doing another Boba Fett. I feel like they kind of neutered him. Uh, so that's what's going on about but that. But they did show him crawl out of the uh, thing. Uh, Sarlacc pit. Sarlacc. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say Kraken. I'm like, that's not right. So in Disney, in Galaxy's Edge, Star Wars World Land. Uh, they had much better than Avatar Land. Um, they have I forget where it was, and one of the um stores they have like it's a museum of oddities, and they have like the whole Sarlacc pit, what it looks like underneath the sand. Oh, I've seen and, some diagrams. Yeah, <laughs> it's really cool to see. Um, I want that for the Bob Studios. All right. Uh, well, I got a question. Yes, if you're in Disney and yes. you're hanging out in Star Wars Land, mm-hmm. can you like? Take one of the starfighters, fly over to Avatar Land, and just blow it up. You cannot because oh. they they have bricks or blocks on them, so you can't go. Uh, well, uh, what if you take the blocks? Off? I think you have to pay tickets. The tickets on them. Poe has too many tickets, uh. so that's the reason for it. Um, I will say the only as great as Galaxy's Edge is, it really is amazing. Uh, if you're a Star Wars fan. Lack of stormtroopers. I need more stormtroopers around. Like, there's some. There should be 14 stormtroopers for every three people. I agree. I agree. (laughs) You can't go anywhere because it's just (laughs) stormtroopers. Excuse me, sir. Can I move? (laughs) Shut up, you. I mean, it's really fun. That's the thing. Like, there's stormtroopers there, and, like, they interact with people. Like, you know, little kids have have a lightsaber out, and they're like, if you knew it was good for you, you would holster that, <laughs> Jedi. And then it was just like fun little things like that. Uh, and they talk they talk to the people in that. So it's just many, they need more of it. So how many times are people talking to the stormtroopers and they like wave their hand like the Obi-Wan? Oh, I didn't even think of that. I, I'm sure. I mean, it's like everyone th- probably thinks they're clever by doing it. And they the stormtroopers about, like, I wish a this, couple dozen a day. <laughs> the stormtroopers like, I wish this phaser was real. <laughs> Uh, you do a, not see my lightsaber. Bam! You see it now. <laughs> um, but yeah, 
Uh, we'll go back to the first one now since this is connected. Per comicbookmovie.com, cameras are still rolling on Andor Season 2. They just said Boba Fett, or that Mandalorian is the only one. But uh, they lied. Showrunner Tony Gilroy is no longer able to write the series because of the strike. He maintains that the scripts were finished prior to the strike beginning. Did you, Tony? Did you finish those? Uh, he shared with the Hollywood Reporter by San Francisco Gazette. God, look at you go, Gazette. After playing around with various genres during the first 12 episodes, sounds like season two's overall feel will be, differ significantly when the show returns. Why? I like the feel of the first season. Did you finish that first season? No, I have not. Have you started it? No, I have not. You need to. Oh, wait. Yeah, I, saw, I watched episode one. It's good. It gets better. Now, uh, well, the one thing the writer's strike will give me is time to catch up on other shows so the new <laughs> ones won't be coming out. We'll get to that in the next article. <laughs> Quote, quote, it's not clearly delineated in terms of genres, but more clearly delineated, seriously, in that each block of three episodes will be separated by a year-long gap. Wow. So they're really standalone, and in many cases, take place over one, two, or three days. So each episode is... It's like 24. Oh, great. Can we get that show back? No, Fox, let it die. Let it die. No one cares about it. Uh, The trade... Can we name it 48? Shut up. (laughs) <laughs> the trade goes on to reveal that with a $250 million budget, Andor is actually the most expensive Star Wars TV show ever made. Figure that makes it pricier than The Mandalorian's first season, which was $100 million. Even the likes of Obi-Wan Kenobi <laughs> and the upcoming Skeleton Crew. We assume that the decision to shoot practical locations was a big part of that. They actually went to the planet? They did. <laughs> That's impressive. Uh, Andor doesn't feature any splashy space battles or light, light, lightsaber duels, which in large part, which makes it so great. I agree. Flexing on being given the financial freedom, Corey said, fuck yeah. Uh, quote, we got lucky. We got lucky that making this during the gold rush a few years ago. <laughs> a lot of people now have cold feet and can't do the show inexpensive, inexpe- expensively. Just so relieved at the reaction because we were making this huge obscure thing and we knew it was crazy. Like, is this too much? Have we gone too far? And then Disney's, Disney's like, here, take some more money. Sure. <laughs> there was no focus groups or groups or test audiences. Now it would be good if we can stick the land and go out strong. And or season two is expected to bring our Disney in two, August 2024. Only a two season show uh, is what they're making it. So um, I don't have the article, but I wanted to talk to you when nobody else was here because nobody else cares about comic books. All right. And that's here. what we started about. Right. That was our initial gist i finished my 1700 page black blackest night oh you finished it yeah i think i have like 50 pages left but it's like those standalone very the 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 obscure ones and that the stuff that happened at the end yeah afterwards yeah um which is still good but great series love blackest night still love it a lot of it is uh like some of the middle parts is a lot of the same stuff happening like oh no we're beaten up by the zombies now we're back we're back down down again now we're back but still great great series um dc is doing something that they are releasing comic books in short series and they've always done this but they've taken more like an anime approach anime that Blue Beetle is coming out because the movie's coming out. Mm-hmm. So instead of saying, hey, we got a new series of Blue Beetle, we're only doing five issues. And then this is their story. Doing a mini series. But if it becomes popular, then they extend it to a new, like another five issues. So I know that they've always had mini series of comic books. Yeah. But this one is they're doing like an anime thing. Like if it's popular, it's like a season one. Five yeah. issues, season one. Five issues, season two. No, that's fine. I, I, that's kind of what they probably should be doing. Yes, and they said the problem is that people get so newcomers don't like it, don't like the old way because there's so much of you know backstory. Oh, yeah. So this kind of gives it a fresh start, fresh series. Some of it can connect, but it's not like overwhelming. Um, Green Arrow, I believe it was, started with four issues, and now they're up to twelve. Um, so they said because of the popularity with it, uh, and then on other books, they've stopped after six issues, like, okay, didn't work. We're done. Uh, we'll do something later. So they said it's done good in terms of sales. And I'm like, that's the only way you're going to get people back. Right. Don't you think, I mean, I think that's a genius idea. I have no issue with that. Yeah. Just knowing it's going to be a little, a little short, uh, storyline. Mm-hmm. 
storyline is going to be, you know, five or six episode issues. Yeah. And yeah, uh, it might we might do one after that, but you know, if you feel like okay, we know where they're, we're at least going to get the whole story. Yes. Because it sucks when they think, oh, I've got this 12-issue arc planned, and they cancel it after four. Well, I remember the new 52, DC, when they rebooted this for the 20th time. Mm -hmm. They put out 52 52 new series. Yep. And you're like, okay. And they had a lot of, I would say, 18 to 20, you're like, series like, what the hell is this? But I applaud them for it. And you're like, okay. Well, then you start getting into them. Oh, we've canceled it after five issues. And it's like they didn't even get that first one what? year run. Oh, I thought they were giving them all a year or something. I don't think a lot of them oh, got okay. a year. Uh, I can double check. Or maybe six. I, I thought they were giving them all a set a minimum run. I think. Um, let's see here. Blackhawks was one of them. Uh, Hawk and Dove, Men of War, uh, Mister Terrific, and Omac and Static Shock. I do not believe made it to that run. Okay. Um, if I remember correctly, that was the idea is that they were going to do a year. Well, yeah. then this, the numbers started dropping dramatically. I think it was Blackhawks, which was the military one. I think that got like 15,000 like buys the one issue. Like it was bad. I don't even remember that one. So. Um, I don't remember. I don't think I ever got that one. <clears throat> um, but yeah, there was, there was a lot of them that just did not do well. Uh, and DC's with this the one, the new version of these limited runs, um, they're doing a lot of them, obviously, based on movies coming out. Like, The Flash just had a limited run. Uh, Blue Beetles get a limited run now. Um, but they're doing a lot of different uh, issues or different series in that. I like that idea, though. I like it. Because I think a lot of ki- people are just buying graphic novels anyways. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, oh, well, hello. I don't think there's many people going out and buying comic books, except you're the, yeah, the, the tried and true. Well, yeah, it's uh, you also have the digital copies. Ugh. I'm not a big digital copy fan. If you got a good tablet, they're not too bad to. I know. I just. I mean, granted, you got to have a tablet that's kind of big, big to to be about the same size mm-hmm. of a page on a comic book. Do you buy digital? No, I mean i've I've gotten found some free ones or something mm-hmm. so i've read some uh comic books like uh what was it uh like some young avengers or whatnot okay. i think i wanted to learn more about some of those characters because i never collected young avengers mm-hmm. and i guess i wanted to know more about uh uh wiccan and speed when, okay like wandavision was coming out mm-hmm. Because I'm like I, I I know who they are, but I don't really know anything about the their characters or personalities. Okay. Um, my oldest son did. We got he's got a couple uh, Miles Morales comic books or the graphic novels, I should say. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I like I said, I just started getting the what is what are those called? Uh, like Blackest Night, those omnibus. Yes, I got that one. I got Saga, uh, which I'm starting next, which is a beautiful 1400 page thing. Uh, but it's the whole run. It's all 51 issues, I think. Which one is Saga? It's the one that's a mom and dad aliens with their daughter. And it's like a whole, it's Vertigo. Okay. And, uh, it's like a whole giant universe that they built. <laughs> um, and so I'm, I've heard nothing but great things about it. I really don't know much about it. I know one alien has a TV for a head. I know that's it. Nice. Uh, there was rumors years ago, a couple years ago, that they were going to make a series out of it. Um, and like it was supposed to be pretty big and then I've never heard anything since. Um, but yeah, I'm, uh, and then I did buy, that's right. I think I remember when we talked about that and then I did buy the omnibus of the Lone Ranger from dynamite. Love the Lone Ranger series. Okay. Good from for you. Middle 2000s. Hey, I like the Lone Ranger. It was good. Uh, finally per screen rant. Ah! Uh-huh. San Diego Comic Con 2023 will have significantly fewer panels this year as companies pull out ahead of a potential SAG AFTRA strike. Currently, the industry is being rocked by an ongoing writer strike, which began on May 2nd, when negotiations with the Alliance of Motion Pictures and Television producer, Producers failed to reach a compromise that offered writers fair compensation. Compensation, among other pressing issues, including streaming residuals and restrictions on the use of AI. Remember when uh, residuals with DVDs and Blu-rays were the first, the big thing? Oh, yeah. Now it's the streaming. That's the thing is, 
when they write in specifically what you're getting residuals mm-hmm. for when a new uh, technology. technology comes along, you got to renegotiate it. Uh, Screen Actors Guild is currently approaching a potential strike as well. Should negotiations not be cl- completed by June 30th? Have we heard anything about the writer's strike be- moving along? Nope. Okay. I haven't. Per variety, multiple companies have pulled out of participating. Uh, let's see here. W- because it would prevent actors from appearing as part of panels or any other promotional engagements. <laughs> that didn't stop the flash. Studios that have pulled out of the event, either largely or in its entirety, include Disney, thus Marvel Studios and Lucasfilm. HBO, Sony Pictures, Universal Pictures, and Netflix. This will preempt panels from anticipated series of movies, including Loki Season 2, Asaka, Shaka, Craven the Hunter. Oh, did you see the trailer for that? Nope. It's on our Facebook page, History of Bad Ideas. Do I want to see it? Uh, I guess. I mean, are you it's saying the guy it that plays good Quicksil- or bad? It's the guy that plays Quicksilver in Avengers. Aaron Tyler Johnson? Yeah. Um... I guess it's a villain that we have to figure out why he's a bad guy again. And his dad was a mobster gangster guy and he left him in the jungle and he got bit by a lion. Uh, I just told him lion man. Yes. Uh, the exorcist, uh, which is part of a trilogy. We haven't seen enough of that one piece. I don't know what that is. And house of the dragon house of the dragon. Hot D. Uh, for many years, Comic-Con uh, panels and presentations have pr- pr- provided pop culture fans with behind-the-scenes insights, announcements, and trailers for huge upcoming TV and movie. Uh, this year will look different. Uh, while the comic book and cosplay sectors of the con- convention will largely be unaffected, this year the halls may still feel relatively barren. Um, there are still certain studios and streamers who are either on the fence or have few pres- a few presentations planned. Amazon says, screw it, we're going. Uh, they will present the Wheel of Time season two. Oh. Yay. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> please. Pu- <laughs> That's when people are like, can you please pull out? Go ahead, yeah. season two. Go ahead. We're fine. The Boys Gen 5, which is the animated series. Okay. Uh, it's the one. I mean, we talked about it. Yeah, the college, like the prof- house, uh, the X-Men one. Uh, in some capacity. Other entities that could be present include Warner Brothers, Max. Paramount Picture, just Max, not HBO. Just yeah, HBO is pulling out, but Max is yeah. It's just a guy named thing. Max. He's just oh. showing up. <laughs> Max Headroom, yes. Paramount Pictures, uh, NBC, and their streaming service Peacock, because no one else is watching. Why not throw them in there? Oh. WWE could be there because they're not actor. I mean, technically, they're not part of the guild. They they don't get their uh, yeah their cards for wrestling. No, <laughs> that's all. It's going to be is a convention, a wrestling convention. Uh, Will Pete Rose be there? No, it's not young enough girls. Anyways, um, oh, wait, there would be, actually. Uh, yeah, you're going to get caught up on a lot of uh, good shows this week, year. Uh, they're not coming back. Uh, TV shows are not coming back. Uh, yeah, I think we might have a year. But that's the thing is everybody's behind on great shows. Yeah. Uh, or at least watchable shows. I still have one episode left on Secession that I love that series. I haven't even had a chance to finish it. I mean, you still have three seasons of, or two and a half seasons of Jessica Jones to finish. Not that series. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that series. Yeah, you don't, I don't know that series. Yeah. I would, but Daredevil would be out by then, the new one. Oh, I guess not. I guess it's not. Damn it. <sighs> they stopped production on that, too. Oh, yeah. They, they, what was it Daredevil and something else? I remember... Marvel. What else is coming out? Something Marvel related. I Echo's thought. already done, and well, <laughs> not the editing. They're trying to edit it so it looks good. <laughs> apparently, oh, uh, the TV show, The Idol, that I've been watching. I'm um, still like two episodes behind. Okay, it's supposed to be six episodes this year, down to five. Oh, uh, supposedly Levinson is part of the plan. Part of the plan. Uh, part this of the this plan. year is the se- this week is the se- uh, season finale and most likely the series finale. <laughs> so I was like, oh. All right, we'll give you one more episode. Wrap it up. Let's, let's get We're done. We're done with this. Because I think when it was originally made, it was 10 episodes. And then they scrapped it all. <laughs> and then uh, The weekend and Levinson came in. So. so they got half of their original. Yeah. Nice. So there was a big bruja. Levinson basically took over from the woman that was running it. It was not pretty. So, uh, Jeff, I just want to let you know, box office news this week. Yes. You have some failures in there. You got some new information. New information. Intern fax machine did a really good job. Added some information for you. 
So, what do you got there for box office? I, I'm looking for the information. It's in there. Just read. Oh, oh, just oh, read. Okay. Usually it was before the actual top five. Yes, just read it. All right. Okay, well, coming in at number one for this week of uh, June 16th through the 18th. Is that right? That's not right. That's not right. Oh, Intern Fax Machine screwed that up. It's the, the 23rd. Through the 20th. 23rd through the 25th. Something like that, yeah. Mm-hmm. My wife's birthday is in there. Oh, your wife had a birthday? Mm-hmm. I miss her birthday. Every year. Every year she has a birthday. Oh, it's 929. Yes, thank you. You know where your kids are at? Well, happy birthday, Mrs. Jason. Yeah. Yeah. She was at a baseball field. Ah. <laughs> well, actually, no, she was driving home because it was canceled. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, number one, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse made another $19.3 million, a total of $317 million on a $100 million budget. Start seeing Spider-Man. Just keep seeing it. Well, keep watching Spider-Man. I like that there's different versions out there. Love it. Oh, yeah. I read about that. Yep. On our Facebook page. Oh, that, that's probably where I saw it. Uh, that 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 is cool. And I like how they kept it quiet to see when it would, you know. People would start realizing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Although I didn't really see what the difference is in the movies. There's a lot of... It's small. Just small, subtle things here or there? Yeah, there's different uh, lines that they say. Uh, There's one that... When Miguel from 2099 shows up, in the scene in the one we saw, he opens up his mouth like a vampire because he is a vampire and he tries to attack Vulture with his teeth. And in other ones, it's not in there. Ah. So I was like, that's pretty cool. I like that they did it, though, because there's different versions. So... When they go to streaming, do you? I don't know. Are they going to Is it like different Clue? versions? And, <laughs> and do you know which version you're going to get when nope. you go to stream it? It's like Clue. There's going to be three different endings. Oh, Mrs. Peacock did it. Thanks, Spider Man. They originally wrote four. Did they? They did. Who's the fourth one? I don't know. And that it's lost to time. Huh. Yeah, I think the right. Well, I don't know if they completed the fourth one, but the whole outline had four different endings hmm. uh, coming in at number two elemental made another 18 and a half million a total of 65 and a half million on a 200 million dollar budget so it, it's not a horrible film it really isn't um not a horrible film <laughs> it's a Actual below average, average film <laughs> it's nothing great but it's c minus i could put it up there with Encanto, like Encanto had better uh, songs. Oh. Uh, well, there's no songs in Elemental. Oh, okay. Well, then I guess uh, Encanto had better <laughs> songs. Then. That's why I said. The grandma in Encanto Con- really pissed me off. She's a horrible character. I was, yeah, I was very, dis- like, especially when everyone was making a big deal about Encanto and, you know, we don't talk about Bruno. And mm-hmm. I'm like, that's a terrible song. And it's probably one of the better songs. My issue is that it was just nothing happened. Like, I kept, I think in my review for nerdly.co.uk, you can look it up there. Good day, mate. Podcast is on there, too. Um, I put it was like a Seinfeld episode. Nothing happened. Like, things, I mean, things occurred, but there was no, nothing else. And I felt like that was with Elemental. There wasn't really anything. Like I said, government oversight was the bad guy. It was like reading Catcher in the Rye. Nothing happened. Ugh. God. <laughs> I like that book. Mm. But uh, I guess you didn't like it? No. Because nothing happened? No, I'm not a big catcher in the rye one. I have another friend who complained she hated the book because nothing happened. On oh, catcher in the rye? Yep. Um, yeah, I like I'll, the Grapes of Wrath, though. Wow. I okay. Book. I really do enjoy Grapes of Wrath. I didn't enjoy that one that much. <laughs> things happened. <laughs> yeah, terrible things. <laughs> Every other chapter, but things happened. <laughs> But anyway, we're talking about Elemental. Yes. Worldwide, it has made a total of $121 million. Will not be profitable. It's not doing well overseas. Yeah. I don't know if people care about Elements. We're really anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's no cute, like, catchy thing in it, yeah. and I, I don't mean, know. I like the general idea of, okay, creatures made of the, the four, mm-hmm. you know, basic Elements inhabit this world but the story they took from there at least what i saw in the advertisements did not make me want to see more i um 
I don't know who it's for. Like, and I, it's sad too because it's a great immigrant story. Like, it really is. But like, there's nothing like for animated film. Like, there's nothing exciting for it though. That's the issue. So you're saying Led Zeppelin should sing it? Yes, the immigrant song. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can't yeah, think. Oh wait. Thank you. Are we recording? <laughs> uh, yeah, the light is red. Okay, good. <laughs> and if I hit that button, yep, I see the time count. Okay, light. good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just for our enjoyment, episode yeah. zero. No, we, yeah, we were just sitting here talking yeah. for an hour and a half. It's fine. Did nothing. Ah, okay. Well, uh, <laughs> let's see what this one is. <laughs> coming in at number three, The Flash made $15.3 million, a total of 87.6. On a two hundred million dollar budget, and that's just the budget of the film, not the advertising. Keep going, keep going. A seventy-two percent drop from its opening weekend, the second worst fall in week two by any DCEU film. Keep going. A total of two hundred and eleven million worldwide, but with a marketing budget of an estimated two hundred million, <laughs> no chance it makes its money back. You know why it's two hundred million? We talked about it last week because Esmeralda Miller was not available to do the press circuit. He was available. Well, <laughs> they just didn't put him out there. Well, Cowards. Meaning he's not available. Okay, so Blue Beetle. James Gunn has said Blue Beetle comes out in August. Will be part of the DCU. No longer DCEU. Oh yeah, they dropped the E. It's not extended anymore. Yeah. How bad does Blue Beetle do? It. It looks enjoyable, but it does not. It looks like an HBO Max or sorry, Max film. The hope is their budget isn't so big that it's Ugh. crazy. I mean, if they were able to make this in a reasonable budget, yeah, then it might do all right, relatively speaking. But no, it's not going to, you know, touch these Spider Man across the Spider Verse uh, monies. No, and even that's not like touching many of these other no um yeah and then they got aquaman 2 in december who is getting we're getting bad reviews lots of rewrites lots of editing and have they cut amber heard completely out i think she's down to 10 minutes is with the last thing i read on that night whether that's true or not who knows but it was down to 10 minutes um but yeah so <laughs> i mean do you think and they did announce uh hold on i forgot to tell you they did announce Superman and uh, Lois. Uh, they, the TV show? No, they um, they cast them. Sorry, in the new Superman film. Oh, oh okay. Uh, where is it here? Uh, Superman Legacy by James Gunn. Uh, or Is it James Gunn? Yeah. 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 Uh, cast David Corin Sweat, C-O-R-E-N-S-W-E-T, and Rachel Bronzenin as Clark Kent and Lois Lane, uh, respectively. Uh, let's see here. Um, Corn Sweat, the guy, broke out in Ryan Murphy's Netflix series Hollywood. I uh, will play Cub Reporter. Oh, I hate that name. Cub Reporter. Kent at the fictional newspaper, The Daily Planet. Uh, Gunn is directing the project from his own screenplay. Uh, let's see here. It focuses, quote, on Superman Bowson balancing the Kryptonian heritage with his human upbringing. Yes, like every other one. Yeah, um, so it's a Superman film. Okay. They also said it's a workplace type film too i'm like no please stop stop but that's what the original television show was that's what made it so great yeah uh I, I'm, I'm gonna say in most of the superman movies from like the last 20 years mm -hmm. or whatever you barely even remember that he's a reporter that is you true no he has another job and a hidden identity uh, it could be like in the comic books back in the early 2000s. He wrote a blog, investigative blog. <laughs> they moved him away from the Daily Planet and made him do an investigative blog. Uh, the guy is from Hollywood or uh, helped anchor Hollywood where he played an aspiring actor Moonlight as a work, uh, male worker at night in the buttoned up 1940s. Uh, he earned widespread acclaim for his breakout performance in Netflix, The Politician, as well as the celebrated horror indie Pearl. We talked about that show. Uh, he would be seen op next be seen opposite Natalie Portman in Apple TV's The Lady in the Lake. Uh, Brosnan, damn it. Brosnan? Uh, yeah. Has a well-established profile as a mantle full of Golden Globe trophies for her work on Amazon's long-running The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Ms. Maisel. Yeah, Mrs. Maisel. Uh, she broke out in Netflix House of Cards, 
recently started opposite Benedict Cumberbatch in The Courier. So there you go. Um, no, she's Nana's. good in Mrs. Maisel, from what I've seen. That's what they look like. Uh, it was funny. The <laughs> One of the things I read online was... Uh, if you lined up this guy, whoever was, was the name, David Cornsweat, with four other guys, I couldn't even pick him out of a lineup. <laughs> like, no one knows who this, like, he's known, but he's not known. But like, that's perfect for Superman because no one recognizes him. That's true. To be fair, I'm fine with it. I'd rather have you pick these lesser knowns. Oh, I would prefer it. that too. Yeah. Especially in the, even in the Marvel films, I'm fine with that. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. I don't know. I don't know if Superman does well. We'll see. I mean, it would do, do well, but I don't think it's going to be anything like the Marvel masterpieces. No, but I think it's going to be the right stepping stone for DC. I think they're at least, once this new stuff comes out, at least their fans are going to mm-hmm. at least, you know, pull people. The fact that James Gunn has his Marvel cred yeah. will pull people in. So if it's I'll watch it's it. decent. It, I'll I'll watch it because, but like the Flash, like after it's already dropped, it's like, well, that's going to that's going to come to Max sooner than later. I'll just wait for that. Uh, what else you got? Uh, let's see, we were doing the no hard feelings. The Flash, okay, yeah, number four, no hard feelings. Made fifteen million in its opening weekend on a forty five million dollar budget, above what they were expecting. All right, Jennifer well. Lawrence. Hopefully it lasts uh, several weeks for it to at least get its budget back. Yeah. I vote for films to get at least their budget back. Most films. Well, yeah. Not the next one. Not Michael Bay films. Not the next one. Oh, wait. What? Not next. Transformers <laughs> Rise of the Beast made in a lot, another $11.5 million, a total of $123 million on a $195 million budget. Yay. I'm telling you, these budgets are getting a little out of control. Just put Transformers together and smash them. Try have to do. What else we got? Uh, up Speaking coming. of Fourth of July weekend coming up. Yeah, well, this is upcoming June thirtieth, twenty twenty three. Entering Fourth of July starts early in the week, so mm-hmm. not quite the Fourth of July weekend as far as the box office goes, but close enough for us. Uh, we have Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Harrison Ford returns as a legendary hero archaeologist in the highly anticipated, is it highly anticipated? Fifth Indiana Jones movie, James Mangold, Ford vs. Ferrari, Logan, takes over as director from series creator Steven Spielberg as America learns, oh, sorry, leans fully into the space race in 1969. Eh. Indiana, Indiana learns about an artifact that has the potential to rewrite the past and future alike. Some of his old enemies are racing to get their hands on it first. So, like every other film. <laughs> oh, so, they bring back all his enemies from past movies? Sure, sure. Even those who melted their faces yes. off? Yes, yes. Because they're rewriting the past. <sighs> Is this time Kate travel? Blanchett back? Oh, God. It sounds like time travel to me. <sighs> I know that there's a lot of flashbacks. <sighs> and a lot of de-aging uh, of Harrison Ford? The one rumor that James Mangold has uh, disproved has come out and said it is not is his goddaughter takes over the whip and the hat. She will not be taking over. So I'm like, so you're dead with this series from now on, right? No more. You paid all this money for it, Disney. You're not going to make any more series. They didn't say that. They just said his goddaughter isn't going to be the one. Or he just went for Harrison Ford to die to take over a new character. <laughs> Somebody or a new uh, actor to take over. Chris Pratt would have been perfect. I'm telling you, they need to do Indiana Jones and the Fountain of Youth. And at yep. the end, he finds it. And whoever you hire to play Indiana Jones from there on out comes out. To be fair, you could do that in the first 10 minutes. Harrison Ford, get in there. What? Ah! Don't even tell him he's in a movie. Just show up, push him into a fountain. If if they were smart, they got a scene of him in this uh, movie going into a fountain and that they can write and put in into the next. It's movie. a fountain in Paris. No, just put a background. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's a fountain of youth. It's the Trevi Fountain in the middle of Rome. <laughs> put the jungle behind it. Put a jungle behind it. <laughs> Who knew that the tre- <laughs> Who knew that it was a fountain of youth was sitting in Kansas City all this time? 
<laughs> Nothing sits in Kansas City. <laughs> Hey, it's the city of fountains. Uh, it is. They have a stadium with a fountain. They do. Although I thought they had more fountains when I think I, they have waterfalls now, don't they? I, I, it, it looked not what I used to. I, I think they did some renovations there, and the the outfield looks different to me now. Doesn't look like a mobile home park anymore. It didn't. That it had a nice, beautiful <laughs> fountain. Now it's got like a small, crappy fountain. I don't know. So it's like a mobile home park now. <laughs> Go ahead. Moving on. Uh, also coming out on June 30th, we have Ruby Gilman, comma, Teenage Kraken. My daughter wants to see this. I don't know what the heck this is. I know nothing about it. DreamWorks Animation returns with a new original story. Well, that's new. Hey, that, that, I'll, I'll applaud them for that. Ruby Gilman, a sweet and awkward high school student who discovers she's a direct descendant of the warrior Kraken que- Queens. The Kraken are sworn to protect the oceans of the world against the vain, power-hungry mermaids. Yeah! Destined to inherit the throne from her commanding grandmother, Ruby must use her newfound powers to protect those she loves most. Uh, we also got some other ones here. Oh, what else? Because Sound of Freedom, based on incredible true story. It shine. This is all over the Fourth of July week, like even oh, next week too. Okay, so we're looking into Fourth yeah. of July here, not just the Friday. Sound of Freedom shines a light of on even the darkest of places. After rescuing a young boy from a ruthless child traffickers, oh jeez. Oh, I don't sound <laughs> fun with that. Movie. A federal agent learns the boy's sister is still captive and decides to embark on a dangerous mission to save her. Time running out, he quits his job and journeys deep into the Colombian jungle, putting his life on the line to free her from a fate worse than death. Joyride. Deep in the Colombian jungle. Doesn't have as much of a twang as uh, Indiana. <laughs> from the producers of Neighbors huh, and the co-screenwriter of Crazy Rich Asians, Joyride stars Ashley Park, Sherry Cola, and Oscar nominee uh, Stephanie HSU. Sue. Sue, is it? Sabrina Wu. The hilarious will be the judge of that. An apologetically explicit story of ident- identity and self-discovery centers on four unlikely friends who embark on a once-in-a-lifetime international adventure. When one of them commits suicide, they get stuck in an elevator. Oh, sorry. That was a million little things. <laughs> <laughs> when Audrey's business trip, to goes to a- business trip to Asia goes sideways, she enlists the aid of Lolo, uh, her childhood best friend, who also happens to be a hot mess, Cat. Her college friend turned Chinese soap star and dead eye Lolo's eccentric cousin. Their no holds barred epic experience becomes a journey of bonding, friendship, belonging, and wild debauchery. Debauchery. Whatever. So there you go. And then finally, Insidious, the red door. Josh Lambert heads east to drop his son Dalton off at school. That's it. No. Uh, however, <laughs> Dalton's college dream soon becomes a living nightmare when he, the repressed demons of his past suddenly return to haunt them both. This is from the Insidious World. Supposedly, this is the final one. <laughs> uh, those three all open. Oh, wait. The only one that opens on 4th of July is Sound of Freedom. The other two open next Friday. Well, there you oh, go. Okay. Sorry. My bad. So, so, no Will Smith movies this year. Such a, <laughs> That's a surprise. Yeah. Slap. Did they ever make? I didn't watch the Oscars this year. Did they make fun of Will Smith slap this year? Did they mention it even? I think it was like not directly mentioned, but hinted at. But I honestly don't even remember who's the host. Uh, who did host? I think, know. No, they had like three different women. Were going back? Know, yeah. Okay. I, I, was it Wanda Sykes? Oh, yeah. And that's right. I can't remember who else. That's right. Okay. Uh, top five this week in honor of 4th of July. Top five patriotic films. No, it's just patriotic American films. It just says patriotic. So things like Nazi propaganda is up for the If list. it's your favorite. Uh, <laughs> if so, we may have some words about our friendship here, but... Uh, just saying, why's it always got to be Nazis? Uh, my number five is, um, sorry, uh, team, uh, I'm sorry, The Patriot with Mel Gibson. Could be higher, but it's Mel Gibson. Yeah. <laughs> so Sugar Tits is not getting any higher on that one. Uh, I was not a fan of, well, I never actually watched the whole movie because I'm, it just didn't do it for Heath me. Heath Ledger is in it. I'm sure it's not. 
a lot of realistic things. But I really enjoyed that movie. Um, I've seen that many times. So, uh, what's your number five? Uh, I think my number five is I'm going to go with Doctor Strange Love. Okay. okay. Or how I, how I learned to stop mm-hmm. worrying and love the bomb. Yep. I think that's the, the subtitle. Everybody sees the when he's riding the missile one. Yeah. I mean, come on. It's good old go America. No offense. You're going to die anyway. So uh, number four for you. Uh, number four. I'm going with uh, Team America World Police. Fuck yeah. America. Fuck yeah. yeah. Here to save the motherfucking day. What was it? A buck oh five or what was it? Freedom costs a dollar five. <laughs> That's what it is. Because freedom isn't free. That's it right. costs folks like you, you and, and me. me. Yeah, freedom costs a buck oh five. Uh, let's see here. Sorry. Uh, my number four. Uh, was G.I. Joe, the cartoon movie from 1987. Ooh. Loved it. Uh, unfortunately, I think it was also the one that they bring out the bugs, too. Um, that wasn't the weather machine? No, it was not. Go- Globulus was in it. Uh, not good. Uh, he was not a good character. Was it a Serpentor one? I think it was in it, though. Oh. Yeah, Cobra Commander actually turns into a snake. Okay, it was that you, one. You think D, uh, Duke actually dies, which made me really happy because I hate Duke. Everybody hates Duke. Uh, but he was just in a coma and came back alive. Oh. Um, but yeah, I remember watching it at home, v- uh, taping on the VCR. Uh, number three for me. Sorry, Jeff. Team America uh, was my number three. Oh, I already so, stole that from yep. you. Oh, put it on the board. Rats. Uh, what's your number three? Uh, number three for me is Captain America, the first Avenger. Fuck you. That's my number one. Oh, love that film. Didn't do that on purpose. I, I know. It it's my favorite Marvel film. Why do you want to kill Nazis? I don't want to kill anyone, sir. I just don't <laughs> like bullies. Great line. Great line. Yep. Uh, my number two. Is it back to me? Oh, no. I got to do my number two. I oh, guess. yeah. You're two. Sorry. Uh, my number two. I have Casablanca. Ugh. What do you mean? Ugh. It's a great movie. Watch that in college. Blech. Well, you had a bad teacher if you came more around going black. Well, that. that's besides the point. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was a great movie. I was very pleasantly surprised when I got around to finally watching it. And it was superior filmmaking. I think you had that when you used to work at the movie theater. I think that was one of those classics yeah, that you had to watch. I did classics. not see that film. I Either I watched it with you and I fell asleep. Or I refuse to go to that one. I think you might have refused to go. I think I might have refused on that one. Uh, Let's see here. Number two for me is a film I really did not like when I first saw it in theaters. Every time I watch it since then, it's been great. Apollo 13. Love Apollo. My number two. Ah, look at that. I'm sorry. I did my number two. That's my number one. No, I put it on the board. You took my one. I take yours. Yeah, you did. Uh, I love Apollo 13, and it just gets better every time I watch it. Kevin Bacon, Tom Hanks. How are our lists so close? I had you down for at least two other movies. Which other ones? not say. Which other ones? Well, I was assuming Rocky IV was going to be on the list. (laughs) Because it's not good. It's fun to watch, (laughs) but it's not good. And uh, sorry, Brian. <laughs> it's a horrible film. It is really bad. And I assumed you were going to have Miracle on your list. Oh, I forgot about Miracle. Okay, one A, <laughs> Miracle and Captain America. Damn, I forgot about Miracle. That might be one of my favorite sports films of all time. I, yeah, because I was even trying to think. Oh, sports films. You know, that what's a good patriotic sports film? And you know, Miracle obviously go America. Yeah. And uh, I just couldn't think of another one. The only one, and I'm not kidding, the only one I could think of was The Replacements. And I was like, that's not a patriotic <laughs> that's film. Not really patriotic. Because <laughs> I was doing the same thing. I was trying to find I, a sports one. I guess Mighty Ducks 2. Fuck you, Iceland. Uh, representing the, or is it Iceland? I think it was Iceland. Yeah. Those bastards. Um, and let's see here. We did have some people here. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. Let me get some. Let me get, um, see if they're... On our Facebook page, we put it up there. Uh, I didn't see any earlier, but uh, let's that see could here. Have changed. Jared Mills. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Jared. I mean, there's only one true answer to this: Team America: Colon World Police. You got it, Jared. It's all right. We saw. We, we got it, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we blew up America. We blew up France. We're fine. Everything We're fine. is being. <laughs> That's right. Uh, let's see here, Devin. <sighs> Bowling for Columbine. 
Okay. Fahrenheit 9-11. Somebody likes Michael Moore. Where to invade next? I don't know that one. Capitalism, a love story. Oh. And idiocracy. <laughs> uh, Stork. Episodic Geek. Hey, Stork. Had Dick. Okay. The Deer Hunter. Dances with Wolves. Okay. Uh, Borat. <laughs> For Kazakhstan. Oh, jeez. And American History X. <laughs> Well, you got a point. <laughs> you got a point. Uh, I don't think they're taking our list seriously. Uh, Brian, ow. Canadian uh, of the Year. Brian will give us a good list. Yankee Doodle Dandy. James Cagney. Independence Day. I, I thought that was going to make your list. <laughs> the more I watch it. So <laughs> okay, thank you for admitting it. <laughs> I really enjoy it. Yeah, I thought you were going to have but Independence it's not good. Day, Rocky IV, and Miracle. I thought those three were... Sure. I still pitch. get Shawshanked into all of those. <laughs> and Rocky IV, I get Shawshanked into all the time. But it is, it's a horrible film. It's 81 minutes. 18 minutes of montage. <laughs> oh, geez. 13 minutes of a creed coming out to uh, <laughs> living in America. <laughs> That's it. Well, we're down to 50 minutes. What can we write, Rocky? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, fire I will break you. Oh, oh, I could give a speech and Russia and America is fine. Yeah. Yeah, sounds great. <laughs> Firebirds. I don't know that one. I don't know Firebirds. Oh, the Patriot and 1776. Uh, Steve at Everything I Learned From Movies. Everything I Learned From Movies. Invasion USA. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what uh, Ray at work said. Navy SEALs. Ooh, Navy oh, SEALs. Navy SEALs. <laughs> Top Gun. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, Independence Day. And Team America. World Fuck Police. Yeah. He has the mo- he has the he links the clip of uh, them running <laughs> the guy in the back when he's shaking his hands. Give us his sign. sign. <laughs> it's me. It's me. Is he saying kiss me? <laughs> kiss this. Uh, so there you go. Uh, there is your top five for the week. I had not honorable mention. No one mentioned. What's that? Red Dawn. Which one? The first one. The original. I got Shawshanks into that last weekend. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll admit that one's not a good movie, but it, it it has nostalgia purposes. I just like that the one kid's dad owns a convenience store that they stop at before they go into the mountains. Yeah. And they load up on, well, this oh. convenience store has guns, bread, <laughs> like guns and bread, bear traps, anything you need, we have. Um, and then the best part is they load it into their truck and they're going down a hill trying to get away from the bad guys. Nothing falls out. <laughs> it's sleeping bags, nothing. Uh, they know how to pack their truck. They obviously do. And there's two people in it. Um, now they should get in trouble for riding in the back of a pickup. But I, I will say it was not good. <laughs> it was not good. I just remembered what would probably be the perfect patriotic film. What's that? Varsity Blues. I don't want your life. I got Shawshanked into that one like two weeks ago. I really like that movie. Deep in the heart of Texas. Uh, <laughs> when are you guys going to talk about Texas? Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, that was your top five. Bad idea of the week. I don't know if there's really bad ones. Is there? What did we talk about? <laughs> uh, we talked about the, the strikes, the uh, writer and potential actor yeah. strikes. Uh, How about this, Hollywood? Uh, pay your no, bad idea number 120, 1,212. Yeah. Paying your writers. You should probably pay them. Yeah. You should probably. I, you know, gonna, if, you're make, if your budget for these movies is 200 million, give the writers some of it. Give them 5,000 extra. I mean, to be fair. Yeah. If you're giving Ezra Miller 20 million for this, come on. Come or on. Something like that. Come on. We don't know what Ezra Miller actually got, do we? Mm, 10 million? I don't know. I'm asking. <laughs> Ten <laughs> four. Dollars? Hopefully, hopefully he gets fifteen to twenty uh, years. Um, <laughs> and uh, Tigers for the show. I didn't have many. I didn't either. My son had one. Oh yeah. What was that one? Going old school. Uh, Going really old school. Really old school. Really old school. I had right words, wrong melody. <laughs> uh, black hole rainbows. I just wrote that down. <laughs> <laughs> That's the game I told you. Yes. <laughs> You might be in deep in the heart of texas i had shinzu binzu <laughs> fucking dog uh, is it highly anticipated hmm? guns and bread yeah <laughs> and deep in indiana i like deep in indiana when are you guys going to talk about indiana 
Uh, keep listening. Uh, Deep in Indiana. That's fun that we can just do that with anything now, any state. <laughs> hey, what about Puerto Rico? Deep in Puerto Rico. Guam. Deep in the heart of Guam. This is a lot. This is fun. I'm just going to start doing this every time. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that'll get boring quickly. Oh, yeah, I'll forget about it by next week. Bad uh, idea number. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. From Walking Dead to Talking Heads, from comic books to TV sets, there's a history. Not so bad, there's the history. It's the history of bad. So bad. The history of bad. It's bad. The history of bad ideas. Oh, yeah. You've been listening to Hobie!